Magavan and folks. This is your boy Kamal once again, and I've been doing quite a few Arc Trig Integrals recently, so why not one more? This one looks pretty interesting. It is the integral from 0 to infinity of arc tangent 1 over x whole thing squared dx. Now, one line of thought would be to write this out as arc tangent 1 over x times arc tangent 1 over x, but the problem with that is I don't think it's a very fruitful approach because we can't exactly use integration by parts. I mean, there is no elementary antiderivative to refer to. So we're going to do something a bit more unconventional, or at least conventional by the standards of the channel. We'll define the integral function i of alpha and beta, that is to say two parameters, as the integral from 0 to infinity of arctangent alpha over x times arctangent beta over x. So that means our target integral is just a case of the integral function evaluated at alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 1. Okay, cool. So we'll proceed with Feynman's trick of differentiating under the integral sign. So we'll first differentiate this whole thing partially with respect to alpha. So we have partial i over partial alpha on the left equal to the partial derivative with respect to alpha of the integral from 0 to infinity of arc tangent alpha over x times arc tangent beta over x dx. And we'll switch up the order of the operators to get the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative of this integrand. So because we're differentiating partially with respect to alpha, that means this arc tangent beta over x term is just treated as a constant. And for the arc tangent, we have one, we have something over one plus alpha squared over x squared, and that something up top is of course the derivative of alpha over x, which is one over x, which does seem quite nice. So that's partial i over partial alpha, but now I'd like to differentiate this thing once again with respect to beta. So now we have the partial derivative. Uh, the second partial, that is, or just partial square i over partial beta partial alpha equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. Of course, we'll differentiate the arctangent function involving beta this time. So that we have 1 over x over 1 plus beta squared over x squared, or better yet, x squared plus beta squared over x times, of course, 1 over x again x squared plus alpha squared over x dx. Wait, there are x squared terms in the denominator, of course. So if I expand this thing by x squared, then we do see that we're left with a factor of x up top, and the same goes for the other term. So that means our second derivative is in fact equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, of x times x up top is just x squared over x squared plus beta squared times x squared plus alpha squared. So at this stage, we're rid of any arc trig functions, and all we need now is a nice little partial fraction decomposition. So the good news is that we have only terms in x squared. That is, we are devoid of linear terms in x or even higher powers in x. So because this is a function purely of x squared, we can simply treat x squared as some other variable, call it u, and proceed with the basic way of partial fraction decomposition, if that's the correct way to say what I'm trying to show you here. So x squared, rather a, over alpha squared plus x squared, plus b over beta squared plus x squared. So I'll expand by the denominator here, yielding x squared is equal to a times, terribly, sorry about that, a times alpha squared plus, rather, wait, it's beta squared plus x squared, terribly sorry about the typos. I started recording this video at exactly 3.14 a.m., which is pretty damn cool if you think about it. But yeah, of course, it's been a long day, and hence I'm tired, so excuse the constant typos and the terribly sorry about that. Or terribly sorry about that. What is the correct plural? 
Please comment down below to correct me. Anyway, so we'll let x squared here equal negative beta squared, and that gets rid of the first term on the right-hand side, and we have negative beta squared equal to b, uh, b times alpha squared minus beta squared. I was about to get beta and b mixed up. So b here equals negative beta squared over alpha squared minus beta squared. And now if we let x squared equal negative alpha squared, then we have negative alpha squared equal to a times beta squared minus alpha squared plus a zero, which implies that a here is just alpha squared over alpha squared minus beta squared, where I've adjusted for the negative sign by switching up the order of this difference. Okay, cool. So all of this implies that partial square i over partial beta partial alpha, in fact, equals, I see that both a and b have this common factor of 1 over a squared minus uh, alpha squared minus beta squared, that is. And we're left with the integral from 0 to infinity of what exactly is left? Oh yeah, for the first term, we're just left with an alpha squared over x squared plus alpha squared. And then we have a negative sign, I believe. Yes, indeed, beta squared over x squared plus beta squared dx. And of course, this is very easy to calculate. We just have a couple of arc tangents. So we have one over alpha squared minus beta squared times arc tangent, rather, wait, it's alpha squared over alpha times arc tangent of x over alpha minus beta squared over beta times the arc tangent of x over beta, with the limits, of course, being zero and infinity. Now, as x approaches zero, in either case, we get arc tangent zero, which is zero. And as x approaches infinity, the arc tangent function approaches pi over two. And, of course, we have some nice cancellation. So we have one over alpha squared minus beta squared. We have pi over twos, so we can factor that out. And we're left with alpha minus beta. And of course, alpha squared minus beta squared can be, factored as, can be factored as alpha minus beta times alpha plus beta. So this implies that partial square i over partial beta partial alpha is in fact equal to pi over 2 times 1 over alpha plus beta. So that is the second derivative. But of course, I would now like to return to the integral function. So for that, I need to integrate a couple of times. And it looks like I should integrate from 0 to 1. Yeah, that does make sense, given that if I recall exactly how we defined the integral function, it was defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of arctangent alpha over x times arctangent beta over x. So if you let either alpha or beta approach zero, in both cases, you have the integral function approaching zero. So the lower limit for the integration with respect to alpha should be zero, and the upper limit sh should be one, because that's our target case, alpha equal to one. And the same goes for the integration with respect to beta. So that means we're interested in pi over two times the double integral over zero to one of 1 over alpha plus beta d alpha d beta. So on the left-hand side, by virtue of the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have i of alpha and beta. And on the right, we have pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to 1. And integrating with respect to alpha yields log of alpha plus beta, with the limits being 0 and 1 d beta. So we have pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of log 1 plus beta minus log beta d beta. Now we have a couple of log functions that can be integrated using integration by parts. So we finally get the opportunity to invoke that. Okay, so for the integral of log of 1 plus beta, we have log of 1 plus beta and we will integrate the 1 next to it in the integrand, but an antiderivative of 1 is not just beta, it's also 1 plus beta, so I'm going to make use of that. Limits are 0 and 1, minus integral 0 to 1, 
and differentiate log of 1 plus beta, we get 1 over 1 plus beta times the integrated function that's 1 plus beta. So we have some lovely cancellation taking place and no need of any more simplification minus the case over here is rather simple beta times log beta limits are again zero and one uh plus now integral zero to one because of the cancellation of negative signs and we have beta times one over beta d beta we see that both of these integrals are exactly the same but with opposite signs so let me just denote their cancellation taking place we get rid of these two integrals and we're left with pi over two times what exactly? As beta approaches zero, we have log one, which is zero. So that means op only the upper limit exists. So we have pi over two times two log two minus, you can verify quite easily using L'Hopital's rule that this thing collapses to zero in both limits. And all of this implies that the target integral, that is the integral from zero to one of arc tangent one over x terribly. Sorry about that whole thing squared dx is actually equal to pi times log 2. Another welcome appearance of both pi and log 2. And wait, the upper limit here was infinity. Just one small correction. And I believe we're done for the case of the target integral. Do we have some more interesting cases? Well, maybe letting alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to something like root 5 will yield something in terms of the golden ratio or and or the logarithm of the golden ratio. Hmm. Verify that and let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.